Hi guys, James here, and I'm going to go ahead and continue with the SI review of Difference Quotient section, and we're going to work on example three, where we are given the function r of x equals 1 over x minus 2, or 1 divided by the quantity of x minus 2. And let's go ahead and start plugging our given function into our difference quotient formula. And I'm going to go ahead and continue with these brackets just to kind of make everything seem as though you have a known path for which you're following when using this formula. And let's go ahead and plug x plus h in for our x in the first portion of our formula, where we have a 1 over x minus 2, but it'll be x plus h minus 2. There would actually be parentheses there, but you can, you will eventually remove them, so you can kind of skip a step and go ahead. Bracket minus, and let's plug in our original f of x, 1 over x minus 2. They may be wondering at this point, well, geez, this problem's really ugly. What the heck do I do? Well, let me go ahead and move this over a little bit to make the oops, wrong tool. Let me go ahead and move this over a little bit just to make things a little easier for me. You may remember for adding and subtracting fractions that, well, in order to do that, you need the to have a common denominator to be able to do that. And you may remember that you learned in algebra that you can even do that with polynomials. Trick is to multiply each fraction by the common denominator, or rather by the portion missing so that you have a common denominator so that you can subtract this one minus one that you're given. Well, in order to do that, you need to recognize that while you're denominator over here is x minus 2. And your denominator over here is x plus h minus 2. So in order to make these both have the same denominator, you simply multiply by the other denominator. And what you do to the denominator, you must also do to the numerator. x plus h minus 2 x plus h minus 2. And what this does is makes both of your fractions have the same denominator. They'll have different numerators, but they'll have the same denominator, and you will be able to continue with subtracting these fractions. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll write that all over uh, the same bar so that it's a little easier to read. So your common denominator is going to be x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2. You could foil all that out, but I think as you found in algebra, usually the case is it doesn't really help you, and sometimes it's really beneficial to leave it undistributed, unfoiled out. And our numerator ended up being 1 times x minus 2 is x minus 2. Forget our minus from above. And 1 times x plus h minus 2 is x plus h minus 2. Okay, now do not forget that this was all over. Oops, pushed shift too long there over h. So a good trick for getting out of this is remembering that you can multiply your middle term by your denominator to get your new denominator. Let's see, where should I put this? Uh, we'll, we'll carry it over here. To get your new denominator, And your numerator simply carries over. 
So what we have here, and we're going to go ahead and we'll remove these brackets. Don't forget to distribute this negative to all of these terms. Otherwise, you'd be wrong. x minus 2. Don't forget to distribute that negative. Negative x, negative h, and the negative 2 becomes a positive 2. Our new denominator becomes h. And again, I'm not just I'm not distributing or foiling anything out because why? Actually, let me change that color. We'll keep that color so you recognize. X plus H minus 2. X minus 2. So this is where our problem is going. And hopefully you can recognize that, oh, look, positive X. We'll cancel out with negative X. Negative 2 will cancel out with positive 2. And what you're left with is negative H. So let's continue on. And don't forget that this negative H will cancel out with this positive H. And what you'll be left with is positive 1 or sorry, negative 1, because it's a negative h divided by an h, negative 1 over x plus h minus 2 x times x minus 2. And so you, again, you could FOIL all this out and distribute these polynomials against each other. But when working with the difference quotient, it's important to understand that our purpose is utilizing the limit where h is approaching 0. So we don't want to get a denominator where if we plug h in, we get 0. And so the theory is to kind of see, use the difference quotient to see that if you were to plug h, plug 0 in for h, that you can end up with a number that is not 0. So if we plug 0 in for h here, well, we will not necessarily get 0 for this entire problem because it just wouldn't work out that way. So it's good to go ahead and leave it like this rather than distribute everything. So our answer will be negative 1 over x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2 provided h does not equal 0. Go ahead and box that as your answer. And there you have it. Thank you.